Bob Hope was a legendary comedian and entertainer who brought joy to millions over the course of his long and storied career. However, as his life drew to a close, he faced some of his most difficult challenges yet. In his final days, Hope battled failing health, the loss of his beloved wife, and the realization that his time on this earth was coming to an end. Despite the hardships he faced, he remained a symbol of resilience and humor, reminding us all of the power of laughter and the importance of cherishing every moment we have. In this glimpse into his difficult final days, we gain a deeper understanding of the man behind the jokes and the enduring legacy he left behind. It's been 20 years since the world lost the beloved comedian Bob Hope. Hope was a true jack-of-all-trades, excelling in every possible medium. From vaudeville to the Broadway stage, from radio to the silver screen, there was no stage too big or too small for him to shine on. In fact, his career as a comedian is entirely unparalleled and unrivaled. He starred in nearly 70 movies and shorts, including the classic road pictures he made with Bing Crosby. These seven films, released over a 22-year span from 1940 to 1962, remain some of the most beloved and iconic movies in the history of cinema. Hope's radio shows were equally popular, with long-running number one hits that kept audiences laughing and coming back for more. But it was his television specials that truly cemented his status as a comedic icon. Beginning in 1950 and spanning over 40 years on National Broadcasting Company, these shows broke records and garnered some of the highest ratings in television history. Bob Hope was a true legend in the world of entertainment, known for his impeccable comedic timing and his ability to make audiences laugh like no one else could. He hosted the Academy Awards a record 18 times, a feat that is still recognized as one of his greatest accomplishments to this day. In fact, many consider him to be the best ever Oscar host a sentiment echoed by all who remember his hilarious hosting duties. But perhaps even more significant than his work in Hollywood was Hope's unwavering dedication to entertaining American troops in times of war. Over the course of four different conflicts, Hope traveled to military bases around the world, bringing laughter and joy to soldiers who were far from home and in desperate need of some levity. Despite his incredible success and fame, however, there were some who criticized Hope for his seemingly endless need for attention and applause. He was a self-confessed ham, always craving the spotlight and the adoration of his fans. Unlike other comedy notables, including Lucille Ball and Johnny Carson, Hope just didn't seem to know when to get off the stage. As Bob Hope entered his golden years, his health began to decline. By the early 1990s, his once hilarious monologues had become ordeals, as his slower reflexes and slightly slurred speech made it more difficult for him to deliver his jokes with the same sharpness as before. Despite these challenges, however, Hope refused to slow down. He continued to book gigs and make appearances, determined to keep entertaining audiences for as long as he possibly could. But as his 19th birthday approached, it became clear that something had to change. National Broadcasting Company, the network that had long been associated with Hope's many successes, knew that a big celebration was in order. However, the comedian's failing eyesight and hearing meant that he could no longer carry the show on his own. Instead, the network put on a lavish three-hour ceremony in which Hope was largely a bystander, watching from the sidelines as others took center stage. To help him follow what was going on, Hope was given a small microphone to wear in his ear. His daughter Linda, who was sitting in the control room, used this device to brief him on who was there and what was happening throughout the ceremony. In 1993, National Broadcasting Company put on a lavish three-hour celebration for Hope's 90th birthday. Although he was largely a bystander during the event, it was a bittersweet moment for all involved, as they celebrated the life and career of one of the greatest comedians of all time. Despite the success of the celebration, Hope refused to retire. He continued to do his specials on the network, even as his ratings began to plummet. His family tried to convince him to retire, but he refused to listen. In 1995, Hope planned a trip to Europe to celebrate and entertain in honor of the 50th anniversary of VE Day. His wife, Dolores, was hesitant about the trip. However, she ultimately relented 
stated firmly that it would be the last time he performed. The trip went off without a hitch, but it was clear Hope's best years were behind him. Bob Hope's last National Broadcasting Company special, Laughing with the Presidents, aired on November 23, 1996, making the end of an era. Although the show was successful, Hope had entered into a phase of well-deserved retirement due to his decline in health. His hearing and eyesight were fading and he was showing signs of dementia. Even in public appearances, Hope appeared disoriented and confused, with spotty short-term memory and difficulty recognizing people. However, at home he was comfortable and settled into a routine. He continued to sleep late, waking up between 10 and 11 a.m., and his caretaker, J. Dennis Paulin, would read him the morning news from the Los Angeles Times. Business documents were provided in large print to help him read them. Bob Hope, in his retirement, found pleasure in simple things. He enjoyed watching Jeopardy! on TV and taking late-night walks, which had moved indoors to the aisles of the local Vaughn supermarket in Toluca Lake due to his failing health. He would also drive his caretaker's golf cart to play a few holes of golf by the lakeside and treat himself to a fake Brandy Alexander at the clubhouse. In 1996, after a lifetime of sporadic church attendance, Hope finally acquiesced to his wife's devout wishes and was baptized into the Catholic Church. Despite his efforts to enjoy his remaining years, reports of Hope's failing health occasionally made the tabloids. Unsympathetic photos of his hunched-over frame and red-rimmed eyes accompanied headlines declaring Bob Hope's tragic last days. He made a few trips to Washington, District of Columbia, for events celebrating his career, including a visit to the White House where he was presented with a congressional resolution making him the first honorary veteran of the United States Armed Forces. In 2000, he was present for the opening of the Bob Hope Gallery of Entertainment at the Library of Congress, which he was proud to attend. Despite his failing health, he remained bedridden most of the time, but Dolores made sure he was brought out in a wheelchair for family gatherings. Bob's health continued to decline, and by this point he was almost completely blind. Despite this, he celebrated his 100th birthday on May 29, 2003, receiving over 2,000 birthday cards from well-wishers, including President George W. Bush and Queen Elizabeth. 35 states declared his birthday Bob Hope Day, honoring his lifetime of achievements and contributions to entertainment. He died on July 27, 2003, at an advanced age. His final words were quite fitting for his comedic legacy. When his wife asked him where he wanted to be buried, Bob replied with his trademark wit, Surprise me. It was a bittersweet end to a remarkable life that spanned a century. Bob had entertained generations of people with his humor, wit, and charm. He had become a beloved figure in America and around the world, and his passing was mourned by many. As we bid farewell to this legend, we remember the joy and laughter he brought to millions of people. Rest in peace, Bob Hope. You will be missed, but never forgotten.